Remember that cool concrete dry pour patio that we did last year? Well today, we're going to not only check out its condition and see how it's fared over the past year, but we're also going to use this really fancy concrete rebound hammer tester to test out its compressive strength and see how that is. But stick around because after we check this guy out, we're going to also look at some other comparative tests I did last year to see how those fared and again, test the comprehensive strength and also look at the very first dry pour that I did and see how that's doing. So let's test something cool. Well, I must say that after one year, I'm pleasantly surprised that this patio is doing really great. But there are some imperfections and some flaws that have happened over the past couple years that, and I will show you in greater detail and close up. But I feel like first I want to clear the patio off, clean it up a little bit, especially with a pressure washer right here in front. This area doesn't get a lot of sun, so there's quite a bit of uh, mildew buildup. And I want to clean off so we can look at this slab a lot better. This, this will also tell us how well that the slab will hold up to a pressure washer. So we'll start there. All right, so got it all cleared off. I've power washed it, but I've also let it dry for 24 hours so that we can get a nice accurate compression test. But before we do that, as far as looks are concerned, it looks great. But the, the biggest problem I'm having is that in, in three different spots, there is some delamination like, like this spot over here. And you might think that, okay, is that where the chair legs were sitting? But no, unfortunately, that just simply delaminated because the process is so unorthodox. And I've got another spot. Oh, it's so hard to see. Let's see if we can adjust the ISO here. There we go. Got another spot right here and another bad spot right here. The other defects that we have is on some of the corners. We do have some cracking, but only on a few corners. I think the biggest issue though that I have is this, this one corner section right here. I don't know what happened. I did everything the same, but this one, this for some reason, this corner just turned out really awful. I don't know why. It's just, again, that's one of the big, that's one of the big problems with doing a dry pour. You get unpredictable results sometimes. It just depends on whether or not you feel like you can live with it or not. And most of the time I can live with it because I do, I, I end up liking the aged decay look. <laughs> now, as I'm sure you've noticed over here on this flag right here, there is a big crack <laughs> right here in the corner. Now, that crack, unfortunately, that did not happen over time. That actually happened when I demolded it. When I took the 2x4 out, there was so much pressure pinching on it, then it, and this slab was so fresh that it ended up delaminating this whole corner. So, so this was completely user error. Other than that, for the most part, the slab looks great. Everybody that comes over loves this patio area, area and they think it's fantastic. Um, we love spending time out here. I will, I will sometimes come out here and spend time out here in the morning and, and watch the sunrise. It's, fan, it's fantastic. It's fantastic having this area out here. Uh, but without further ado, let's get to the strength test. Let's, let's, let's do that right now. So this is a concrete rebound hammer tester and it it measures in newtons, not PSI, but don't worry, we will be able to convert the newtons into PSI so that we can better understand comparatively the strength. And what we're gonna do with this thing is we are going to, we are gonna measure 10 points, 10 different points that are at least two inches away from each other. And then we're gonna come up with an average compression strength in newtons. And, and then we'll go from there. All right, 
right, so I'm gonna run through all the numbers with you to show you my math to prove that I, I uh, how I got the number that I got. Now, if if this if you feel like this is gonna bore the ever loving shit out of you, go ahead and fast forward to this timestamp right here if you just want to find out what the PSI is. But adding up all 10 tests got me to a number of 286. Divide that by 10 tests, that gives me an average of 28.6 rebounds. Now, when we go to this nifty little chart that we have on the side of our tester, we can go ahead on the side and, and look for 28.6 rebounds right here on the bottom. Then we're gonna go up the graph to this green line since we are measuring a horizontal surface. Then we're gonna follow that straight over to get our Newtons, which it looks like we've got 29 Newtons. Now that doesn't mean anything to us, but since one Newton is equal to 145.038 pounds per square inch, we times that by 29 Newtons to get 4,206.10 PSI. Now, since the average traditional pour concrete averages anywhere from 3,000 to 5,000 PSI in one year, I'd have to say that 4,200 PSI is pretty damn good, and I'm actually pretty damn shocked of the results. I'm going to be quite honest with you. I thought that we were going to be close to the minimum range uh, instead of right smack dab in the middle of it. Now, now, albeit to say, I am obviously not a professional compression concrete strength tester, but I, I read the instructions pretty carefully on this tester that I got. It's a, a very reliable unit. I'm not sure where, if, you, if any professionals are out there that notice that I did something wrong, please, by all means, go ahead in the comment section, tear me up, I, whatever. But with that being said, I want to show you some other test labs that I did about a year ago. One with the traditional pour and one with the dry pour. I want to see how those fare without the boring mat. So over here, you can see that I've got two small slabs that I actually poured around the same time as I poured the, uh, the circular dry pour over there. When you take a closer look at these two slabs, it is abs there is absolutely no question which one is the dry pour. Obviously, the one on the left is the traditional pour, and the one on the right that looks like awful, awful dinosaur poo, that's, that's the dry pour. Now, I've done well over six dry pours at this point. I, I, none of them, none of them have turned out looking anywhere near like this. I, I honestly have no idea what happened. Um, you can see the surface, the surface is delaminated so bad that I can actually just easily pull the surface up with my fingers, no problem. But the, the, everything underneath, the base, the, the aggregate base is quite solid. There's nothing wrong with it. It just, it just looks ugly. Coming over here to the traditional pour right here, it looks fantastic as usual. Nice, perfect surface. It's cured quite evenly, quite well. Very solid. There, there, there's no, no surprises there. So um, our dodgy dry pour sample tested out at a whopping 16 newtons, which came out to be 2,320 PSI. I am not surprised. And our traditional pour tested out to be 39 newtons, which converted into 5,656 PSI. Now that's over the average, but that's uh, probably because I poured it. But uh, my uh, curiosity got sparked even farther when I remembered that. You guys remember when I did that dry pour concrete countertop? Well, it's still sitting back here uh, cooking. And here it is in its awful crumbly goodness along here with a lot of other test subjects. Well, I tested this guy out as well. Obviously, I didn't bother testing this side because this was the really, really extra dry, crusty side. But this side was good and solid, so I tested this area, and we actually came up with uh, 17 Newtons, which is one Newton over the dry pour, small 12 by 12 slab that I have out there. That converted out to be a little over 2,400 PSI. So, so we were almost 100 PSI stronger on this ridiculous dry pour concrete countertop than we were with my, my four inch dry pour test slab out there. Remember the original dry pour slab I did? Still looks pretty good. 
Now this guy came up with 27 newtons, which converted over into a little over 3,900 PSI. That's still smack dab in the middle of the average traditional pour range. Now, to be quite honest, we really can't take our findings for this guy into consideration because I pulverized it with my truck, then glued it back together with Rapid Set Cementol, and then coated it with Rapid Set Nucrete. So we really can't count it in, but it's still pretty interesting. Anyway, so what, is, what does this all mean? What do all these numbers mean to us? It means that, uh, well, dry pour is just as unpredictable as we probably thought it was, but I definitely think that dry pour is a lot stronger than we thought it ever could be. So do with that what you will. And with all that being said, I still love my dry pour patio. I love being out here. If you haven't seen that video where I make this monstrosity, click on the link above. Thanks for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.